Hey, Tom. Hey, Liz. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Um, golly day. Um, another day in the uh, managing the, uh, the 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 world with the uh, the pandemic, I guess. Um, We've reached out of her from a lot of cleaning businesses uh, over the last 24 hours. And um, I guess a lot of things are going on. I've had several of them share that they've uh, come to the conclusion that they're going to be uh, discontinuing operations for, for, for some period of time. Um, in some cases, they're giving a giving like a two week window. In other cases, they're just saying until further notice. Um, I guess the situation is different in other parts of, you know, the country or, or, the, or the world for that matter. And I guess some communities have so much, uh, you know, natural spread within the community that the, that the level of concern is there that um, it might make. Oh, dear God, Liz, are you okay? I'm fine. Allergies. Okay. Actually, I understand sneezing is not a symptom typically of coronavirus. Not a symptom, but it is definitely an excellent way to spe spread it. It definitely would be. It would yeah. be. Yeah. Um, also had um, a couple of uh, people reach out to me last night wanting to know how to big commercial jobs. And these were people who basically said that they have really no experience with this. So when I asked the question, um, you know, how, why, why are they asking you this? Are you bidding or, you know, against other companies? Because if the answer is, yeah, it's like a competitive bid, I would have suggested, well, you might not want to spend a ton of time on that because if there's other companies you're bidding against that do that on a regular basis, more than likely, you know, they're going to get to get the job. But uh, the feedback was something along the lines of, um, you know, there's, so much work and not enough contractors and they're basically just saying that they really need us to help them so hmm. opportunity so we need to really figure out how to uh, how to quote that so um you know i gave some 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 high level advice at the, at the highest level you know you really need to understand what the scope of work is you know what is it that you're asking me to do what are the things that you're asking me to clean to sanitize to disinfect what quantities are there? Is there anything written on a piece of paper that explains these are the areas we're cleaning and these are the things that we want you to do in those areas? If not, you need to kind of get that figured out. And then once you know that, you would then do what they call workloading, where you would just use your 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 best judgment as to how many labor hours you think it would take to do those things. And then figure out how many days a week you're going to do those things and, you know, figure out like a, a, a monthly cost for all of that. Cause most of these jobs, they want a, uh, just a monthly bill for, for, for that type of work. So um, the other part that, 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 that we talked about a little bit is if you don't really know, uh, have much experience in doing this type of work, but the, the client's reaching out to you and saying, Hey, I'm really in need of help tell them that you know you're you know you got a good company and you got people and you know you're reliable and you know that you can do a good job for them but i've never bid a job like this before i we typically don't do this type of work you know be transparent be open and say i'll be glad to help you but you got to help me help you in my experience they'll take you by the hand and walk you through what it is that you need to know and you know, in a lot of cases, at the end of the day, they'll help you figure out the things you need to figure out. And if you're not charging enough, they'll tell you you're not charging enough in, 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 in a number of cases because they want you to be successful as much as you want to be successful. If you get it wrong, you're going to figure that out pretty quick, in which case you're not going to want to do it. And they're back to, uh, you know, needing help again. So I want to talk about that a little bit today. Liz, do you do, have you ever done any commercial work? We used to do a lot of commercial work, um, but I, I stopped doing it and now I don't feel confident like I used to. So I'm actually super excited to be on uh, doing this call today. Okay. Because we're, well, we're getting people calling, right? Yes, 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 we are. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? Let's do this. this is um, 
a spreadsheet that we actually used in our foundations class. We've got our whole class on, you know, how to quote jobs. And most of it was about, <coughs> excuse me, goodness, I've got it now, residential. But uh, it's an example, just a, a high level example of how you can figure out what you should charge for commercial cleaning. And I'll take this and, and upload it on cleaning business today and the resource thing so you guys can can download it and, and, and use it. But in this example, it's a job that you would have, you know, two people assigned to and they'd be each working three hours a day. And um, I'm going to look over here on the actual spreadsheet and um, five days a week. And you can change all these numbers here. And in, in, the, the number of hours per day, days per week, and it'll calculate the uh, number of, I guess let me do this. The ones that you change, I'm gonna go ahead and make peach color. And say you pay your people, this is an older example, but say $10 an hour and uh, and $12 an hour respectively for, for the positions that they, they have. And you can change those to whatever you want to. And this is calculating the gross pay for the week. Um, you also need to know what your labor load is in terms of insurance and taxes and all the other things that you pay on top of, you know, uh, a, a dollar in salary. In this example, it's 30%. So that's an extra 99. So your total loaded labor cost to do this job is uh, $429 in this example. The tricky part to start off with is to figure out how many hours a day is it going to take how many people in order to meet the scope of work and that's why it's important to have a scope of work if a potential client residential or commercial just says hey can you clean yeah we can clean then there's a really broad mm -hmm. spectrum of, of 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 understandings as to what that might mean so in this example um, you would need to have a scope of work. I don't have it here, but something that would kind of lay out in detail all the things you're touching and, and, and doing. And you would have to estimate how many people and how long. And you'd plug that in here. And with those other factors, you could get uh, a monthly loaded cost. And then you want to add other costs to your project, such as chemicals and equipment, uniforms, and all of these we've got set as a percentage of your your uh, loaded pay and you kind of need to have an idea what those numbers are too and you should be able to get those out of your accounting system if you're tracking all those separately just you know look at a given month and take what your normal um you know take take what your supplies are in a month and divide it by what your your loaded pay was in a month and get a percentage and you would put that in your spreadsheet and for quoting purposes, sometimes you'll even share a spreadsheet like this with your, your, your prospective client. They call that an open quote where they're looking at it and they might think that you're expensive, but if you show them all of that, then it's a matter of, well, tell me what you want to want, want to cut. You know, you want to pull labor out. I can do that, but you might not be happy with the cleaning. Or if you know you don't want me to you know use as, as many supplies, I can try to pull some of that out, but that's not going to you know help you much either. But the point is, you do that, and then you're going to get a bunch of other costs, and then you need to go ahead and figure out what you're going to charge for for overhead because you still have your office staff to pay rent and stuff like that. And you know I've got an example of 25% plug in here and. You, again, that's where looking at your financial statement in QuickBooks, if you, you know, this is a whole other discussion, but if you look in QuickBooks and look at um, what your, your fixed cost and your overhead is and divide that by your direct labor payroll, you can come up with another factor, anywhere from 25 to maybe as high as 40%. It can vary by company, but you can kind of go ahead and, and, and play around with numbers until you get something at, that that looks right if you don't don't have anything else. And the last thing that you would plug in would be your profit margin. In this example, we have 10%. And all of these numbers are being calculated here. This comes out to what your weekly bill rate would be and multiply that times 4.33. So in this example, this is what you'd be charging the client per month to do five day a week job with 
six labor hours a day in it, assuming, you know, these rates. Um, I'll share this with you and you kind of play with it. Obviously, there's a little bit uh, of as much art as this science to this, especially if you don't have good data as to what some of these factors are. But in time, you can collect that and get better at it. If you got somebody calling you up and saying, hey, I'm really in a pinch and I need you to clean for me, I'd bump some of these factors up because they're kind of desperate, right? I mean, if somebody called me up and says, I want you to do a important job for me that I know that you've never done anything like this before, but nobody else would do it, so I want you to do it, then that's also telling me that you know they're not looking for the lowest price. And it's better to bump some of these numbers up if you want to make a better margin as opposed to making your profit margin real big because that doesn't look good, but you can actually fluff some of these other numbers and inflate them higher than what they are because nobody's going to know that. And that's what most commercial contractors who use this type of, of bidding do anyway. And they'll say, yeah, hey, look, I'm only, they might bump this down to 2%, but add that other 8% in somewhere else. And, um, you know, you guys get the picture. Um, and again, I'll uh, go ahead and, and clean this up a little bit and upload it into the uh, resources on cleaning business today so you can, can, can download it and play. And, you, know, you might have questions after that, but at least it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a start towards a tool that you can use to uh, start figuring out what you might want to want to bid for what we're calling this non-traditional income during these uh, dynamic and, and, and trying times. If uh, your residential clients don't want you to clean for them, then because of you know their fears and concerns, then you uh, might be able to make uh, some of that, maybe a lot of that, maybe more than, than, than what you thought you would doing, uh, doing this commercial work. So what do you think, Liz? Ah, so I have a ton of questions. We don't have a lot of people on this Facebook Live, Tom. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, you can? Um, there must have been a weird lag. It looked like you were talking silently, silent film. Uh, okay, so I have a ton of questions. We don't have a lot of people on here, but you know, people are always going to watch lives later anyway. So, um, Okay, so the first thing is, is there like a standard price? Like if your area, like in an area, if you typically charge blank for residential cleaning, should you be expecting to charge blank for commercial? That's a good question. Right. Typically, okay. you know, a lot of times you know, in, in commercial work, residential too, but even more so commercial, they're looking at, you know, what is the uh, rate per square foot for some type of cleaning, you know, and the rate per square foot for industrial space would be less than what it would be for warehouse and different from, uh, you know, uh, multi-tenant office space, which typically is a little more labor intensive and, 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 and more expensive. And, a lot of it really comes down to how many square feet you can clean per hour. And that number has been going up and up and up over the years. I mean, there's some contractors out there now that are bidding these type of jobs using the spreadsheet on the assumption they can clean maybe 4,000 square feet per, per labor hour. So, you know, if you've got a 40,000 square foot uh, building that needs to be cleaned five days a week at 4,000 square foot, then that would be like 10 labor hours to, to, to do that a, a day. So, yeah, there is. I don't live in this world, so I don't know what, what they are, but um, I guess it would be a really great question to ask somebody who's approaching you and you say, you know, as a, as a house cleaning company to clean my commercial space and yeah, sure. I'll be glad to help you. A really good question to ask going to be, you know, what, uh, you know, what type of rate per square foot are you, 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 you used to paying here? What, I mean, help me, <laughs> help me help you. Well, and another thing that this is tying into is how relevant are those prices anyway? Because the, the work in, that needs to be done is not really the same work that's being done, just your basic commercial work. 
this is a, a completely different level that people are looking for. So I, I don't even know how relevant what that pricing is. What do you think about that? In supply and demand? I mean, just by the fact that they're calling uh, a potential vendor who traditionally doesn't even do this work says that, you know, price isn't really going to be driving this decision. I need, you know, I'm, I'm desperate. I need somebody. Yeah. So within bounds of reasonability, you can probably charge whatever you want it to. I'm thinking that uh, people are going to be looking at, um, or, or at least I'm thinking about doing myself is maybe giving some quotes by the week. So if people are needing service every single day, so maybe a, like a weekly quote, I think that um, some of these numbers, if somebody wants to have their, their building cleaned every single day, maybe even multiple times a day, um, that, that monthly price is going to sound like, wow, I'm not sure I can afford that, but the weekly price you almost can't afford not to. And especially because a lot of people are still in the mindset of, you know, hopefully this will clear up in a couple of weeks. So I think giving that yeah. monthly price is going to be like, oh, I don't need a month. I just need for a couple of weeks. What do you think? Could be. I mean, if they're looking for something just, you know, for this this moment, you can certainly, certainly bid it that way. Um, most uh, commercial, you know, contract cleaning jobs are, are, are billed on a monthly basis. We I've always done a monthly. A, you know, a dimension of this, or, you know, at least related topic that's worth mentioning is, you know, okay, this is what we're going to charge you per week, per month, per, per job, whatever, you know, you can charge yeah. it whatever you want. You need to talk about terms because these guys aren't going to have a check on the uh, countertop waiting for you when you show in, or you're not going to be charging their credit card at the, uh, at the end of the day, they're going to want an invoice. And if yeah, they got this thing, you know, what are the terms? How many days do I have to, to pay this bill after you've created it? You've heard the term net 30. That means that you're giving that, that client 30 days to pay the bill after from the day that it was created. Um, you know, we're getting in a time where, 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 where cash is going to be real tight and businesses are going to have a lot of bills setting on their desk and they're going to be figuring out who am I going to play, pay when. Um, my advice would be to try to get the tightest terms that you can and bill two things. You know, I would, I would, I would say that, you know, I'm a small company and I'm going to help you, but I don't do this type of work. You know, can I give you an invoice every week and can you pay me by the end of the next week? And they might push and so on and so forth and say, I want a monthly bill. Say, okay, I can do a monthly bill, but I'm going to pay, I'm going to bill you right now for the next 30 days. And can you pay me 15 days from now? Which means, you know, you really are going to get paid for work that you haven't even done those last two weeks. And a lot of times they'll do that if they don't want to do a weekly bill. But try not to do net 30 if you don't have to. Certainly if they come back and say, you know, I want to do like net 60, net 45, I would start staying away from that. And the other thing that you really want to do is that you need to look at your accounts receivable when you're doing this work and you cut the invoice at the beginning of the month and it's the 15th of the month and if they haven't paid you, you need to be on the phone with them or your bookkeeper, whoever needs to be on the phone with them and say, Hey, friendly reminder, it's the 15th. Haven't gotten paid yet. And wanted to know, you know, what the status of that is because they'll have a status. They'll have a stack of bills over here that the idea is I'm not going to pay these until I have to. And if you don't ask, they're not going to say, Hey, do you want to get paid yet? In 30 days, 60 days, it'll just sit there until you ask for it. Not hundred percent of the time, but it will be happening more and more as the economy slows down. So if you're going to be doing work and you're going to be doing it and we be billing and expect to be paid at a later date, please, please, please watch your receivables. And the day it's done, you need to be asking for the money because they're going to pay the people who are paying attention and they won't pay the people who aren't. Yeah. You know, I'm going to piggyback on top of that too, Tom. Uh, right now, everybody is so up and down with their cash flow that I'd definitely be recommending that you you be paying close attention to your cash flow. Uh, you, a lot of times 
in our industry, it's really easy to feel like you have a lot of money <laughs> because cash is coming in every single day. Um, but this environment is very, very different. And we're going to be, you don't know today, you're used to knowing how much money you're gonna have, kind of, right? How much money's coming in. But if you haven't dealt with it yet, you should probably be planning for losing jobs each day. I'm hearing anything from drops in 10% drop down to 70% drop in, in revenue, um, just from the coronavirus, right? Just steadily going down. And that's, that's companies that have been around a long time, co companies that haven't been as around as long, but right, yeah, that if, if you are steadily declining, your revenue is steadily declining, and your cash flow is, is crunchy, then you're gonna have a hard time paying your employees. You're gonna have them doing all of this work up front. It's Sometimes it's really enticing to see this really big bill. It's like, yes, I'm gonna be charging them whatever, $2,500 for the month, and it's kind of easy work for us, but you're gonna have to come up with that $1,250, whatever, and are you going to have it? Are you going to have that money? Because you're going to have to have it before you get before you get paid. And so that's kind of tricky for a lot of people as well, especially right and now. If this is, yeah. And if this is one of those situations where they called you and say, hey, I'm in a pinch and I can't find anybody else to do this. Will you do it for me? That's That has to be part of the negotiation, figuring out what you're going to be charging per month or per week is just part of it. But the terms are just as important. It's like, I'm a small company. You know, I don't have the ability to float a big receivable. You know, I got to get paid real quick. And if yeah. they need to, they'll, they'll do that. Yeah. Uh, I think people are going to see this as a necessity too. A, a lot of these companies are going to be seeing this as a necessity. So this bill can pop to the top. It is more important than a lot of other things. Um, they got to be able to keep people safe. You, you, that That's something that's going to uh, pop to the top before a lot of their other bills. Uh, I, I mean, I got to believe that anyway. Uh, let's see, I have another question. Oh, Tom, did you have an example of what you might submit to? So let's say that you're um, reaching out to um, a company and you want to start doing some of this work or they've reached out to you. Um, and, and time is of the essence here. People need to get the cleaning started now. They don't have time for you to take three days to work up a beautiful bid, send it over to them, talk to them. Is there like a quick something that we could send people? Is there like a basic bid that could be sent out? Um, yeah, I could come up with some examples and we could maybe share them tomorrow if we'd like. I don't, um, yeah. yeah. I guess and, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have that, that ready today. Um, but in order to do the bid, the presumption is that you would have needed to have gotten, you know, made contact with the person and say, yeah, I need, I need a, somebody to provide XYZ service and here's the scope of work. And then you would, you know, go through the process of, of doing the uh, spreadsheet that, that, that we looked at. So at the end, you need to present them with something. And, you know, I can show you examples of proposals that are several inches thick that gets into, you know, all kinds of fluffy stuff. If you're truly competing for something with other companies, yeah. but if they're basically telling you, you know, you got the job, just tell me what I need to pay you. You don't need to burn a lot of calories on, you know, printing a bunch of pieces of paper. So I got a, you know, a real simple. I'm sorry. Sorry, Tom. I, I I cut you off there. Please finish. No, no. I just a real simple agreement that that you can kind of give your proposal on, and that would meet their business requirements. So. Um, then you then you got yourself a commercial client. So they need a little something more than just an email. Depends. I mean, there's a lot of companies okay. that just go with that. It depends. Okay. You know. It, it depends. What do they need? 
Yeah, if you're dealing with a large corporation, they're probably going to want more. There's a lot of small businesses out there that, you know, a handshake's good enough for them. They just need to know what it's going to cost them. Yeah. And right now, the the price is not even as important as can you do the work and how quickly can you get in here and how much yeah. can I rely on you? All Being right, another question. Sorry, go ahead. What? No, I'm just saying being reliable is a very important part of it. Yeah. Uh, my, my, I got another question about, um, do you think that these types of jobs, are they looking for somebody to come in and hand wipe? Or are they looking for like some spraying or some fogging or misting? Or do you have any thoughts around that? What, what these bigger companies, the commercial spaces might be looking for? I thinking they're 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 looking for something that they can point to and saying that they're being responsible in you know reducing the chance of anybody catching an infectious disease in the space for which they're responsible. Um, they might have some, you know, depending, I mean, it's going to be across the board. Some, some prospects might have preconceived notions in terms of, you know, I want somebody to spray hyperchlorous acid or I want somebody to clean with, you know, dry steam vapor or, you know, I want you to disinfect. And they might be talking about stuff that I don't even know what they're talking about. But what they really want is, you know, I want my, the people in my building to feel comfortable. You know, I don't want, you know, people coming to me 20 times a day saying, I'm worried about, you know, getting sick in this building. What are you doing about it? They want to be comfortable right. that if something does happen that winds up being some type of legal <laughs> something or other that, you know, they won't be, you know, they can, you know, prove that they were doing everything they reasonably could and they weren't being negligent. And if you can offer them a solution where you're showing them that you're doing something, something that would be considered best practices for reducing the chance of somebody, you know, getting sick in their, their building. That's what they really want. What they, you know, how they express that could be all over the board. But, you know, at this point, you know, it's like they might be thinking they want apples, but you know that they would be better off with oranges. You need to explain yeah. that to them. Okay. That's good. I'm not sure that a, um, a ton of people in our space really know if they say they want apples, all right, maybe I need to give them apples. I'm not sure if my oranges will get the job done, you know? So uh, I, I think it's, it's not, we're not going to have all the answers maybe, um, or you're, maybe you're not going to have all the answers, but if they've contacted you, you're in a better position. We, we do have a couple of comments here. Tom, I don't know if you can see them yet. Can you? Yeah. You can? Okay. Kim's asking us some questions here about a hotspot package, only not the full house cleaning package, uh, how to create options. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, I, I guess that could be residential or commercial. I mean, right now, People are just scared and scared in an irrational way. You know, if I go ahead and buy 20 packs of toilet paper and I'm going to feel better, and that doesn't really, you know, you don't need 20 packs of toilet paper. People are scared and they're irrational. Eventually, and this might take a few weeks, who knows, people are going to come to the realization that they're going to have to learn how to live with coronavirus for, for a while, maybe a good long while. And what do I need to do to, to, maximize the chance that me and my family is going to be safe. And that's when you and us as house cleaning companies can, can start educating clients, commercial, residential, whatever, that this is how we get sick. It's got to start with that. You know, how do people catch a coronavirus? And for the most part, it's the, the, the virus winds up on a surface because somebody sneezed or coughed on it or sneezed and coughed on their hand and wiped it on the surface. And a healthy person comes along and touches that same surface, has the virus on their hand, and then they wind up touching their, their, their face or picking up a cookie and eating it, doing something that that virus gets in their mouth, nose, or eye. And 
you know, now they have the pathogen in their body. And if it's enough of it to actually start propagating and for them to, uh, you know, actually develop the uh, disease, then, you know, that's, that's, that's how it spreads. So you got to be able to understand that. You got to be able to explain that. And they call this the, um, you know, how the, the whole circle of infection goes. And there's the article in Cleaning Business Today that does a really good job of explaining that. And if you haven't read it, I'll show it to you here at the end. You really need to do that. And it's like, hey, we're good. You know, we're a professional cleaning company. We break that cycle. We break that cycle of infection because we're going to kill and remove those viruses from these surfaces that healthy people are touching. And if it's not there, then it's not going to spread. And you yeah, can do that. I'm, you can, I'm you can, glad you're going to share that, Tom. That'll be awesome. I mean, you guys are you guys have been doing that. We've been talking about that, and you've been educating. I mean. Talk about that a little bit, Liz. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that need to understand that, right? Everybody, <laughs> everybody needs to understand that. And I think that if we're we're pushing on that message right now, while everybody is so afraid, we can we can alleviate some of their pain. Um, it's not just that they need things clean. Not to say that they don't; they absolutely do. But additionally, they need to just they need the relief of they've been and, and all of us, we're all kind of feeling this right now. It's just like so much pressure pulling us down, the fear and the anxiety and you know what's gonna happen. The uncertainty is just it's really hard to sustain. So anything we can do to alleviate that, I'm sorry, I'm having all sorts of <laughs> issues over here. I feel like I need to sneak well. <laughs> um, uh, but as much as we can alleviate that mental side of it, I think we're really we're we're doing a, an even bigger service for a lot of people, or maybe the first thing that we need to do. So, how we do that is not just by cleaning; it's by educating people on what it is exactly that we're doing and why they're going to feel better because they really are going to be safer. And science is the answer to that, I think. If we just say we're going to come in and we're going to clean and disinfect your surfaces and that's the same thing that everybody else is saying, I, I'm still not sure I feel all that great. I need, I need more. Same reason why everybody's watching how much information about the coronavirus. I mean, I know some parts of the country, they're still not um, all the way uh, synced in, but for the places where there are deaths and um, known cases, <laughs> people are all over the virus. They're watching the news. They're looking at everything they can find. Um, we, we do have a couple of other comments here, Tom. Uh, let's see, hold on just a sec. <coughs> of course, worst case I've had here of needing to cough. Uh, so Kim is just giving us a little bit of information that she's doing a small office, two office spaces with a, a co conference, large room and that has desks at one end, one bathroom, a very small kitchenette, and she's charging 904 plus taxes. Is that right? Kitchenette 904 plus taxes equals 101.70. What does that mean, Tom? I'm missing something. Um, I'm looking for... You're seeing something a little different than what I'm saying. Oh, what are you seeing? Um, this was 16 minutes ago. She posted this, and then Dawn posted after that. And then Kim came in and talked about that she had a mandatory. She told them that it would be mandatory payment, um, and they really wanted her service, so she was able to get that deal. Ah, $90.40. Okay. Um, is what she was charging and then saw $101 for it. And she was able to get, sounds like she was able to get her payment right away because they really wanted her service. Uh, and looks like then we have Dawn says she'll be doing a walkthrough for a restaurant pizzeria this evening. It was a referral, but not what she normally does. And it just jumped. Where'd it go? And now it's fine. Oh, where is this? Are you able to see these comments, Tom? Uh, some. I didn't see that. I see. Dawn, uh, Dawn is now disappeared. 
Yeah, well, it says yeah. there's eight comments, but only four are showing, and they're all Kim's now. Hmm. Oh, but I do like what Kim did. She got a credit card. I love that. I really it, like to get a credit card too, and just ding that credit card as soon as the work is done. That's a that's a great point. Always ask for that. They might say, "Well, no, yeah. we don't do that," but always ask for that. That's the best way to go. Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, a lot of, oh, David Kaiser's on here too, but I can't see his comments. I can see that he made one. Well, so frustrating. I can, see, I can see David's. He's talking about, uh, <laughs> well, he just disappeared now. Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> they're just, on my end, I can only see four comments and they're all Kim's, but I can see that there are additional comments according to this and now i see 14. <sighs> he was making a comment right, what well. a great opportunity to creating business owners i can paraphrase i know where he's going with this to introduce okay. um some of the more innovative ways of cleaning say dry steam vapor or hyperchlorous acid or some of the other um cleaning methods that are that are that are known to have a particularly high, uh, you know, level of, of, of efficacy and reducing pathogens in, in, in the home. And most cleaning companies don't do those things or do those on a, you know, a regular basis. Maybe it's like on a, on a special occasion because most consumers don't want to pay for it or traditionally they haven't wanted to pay for it. They just make it look good and make it cheap. But, yeah. uh, Companies will pro I mean, you know, homeowners will once they kind of get over this irrational fear and they start, you know, just rationally trying to figure out how am I going to survive in a world with the coronavirus, they'll pay more for the stuff that's going to make them safer. So frustrating with these comments. I'm sorry. Uh, David says, here is a big one, I'm guessing a tip from Terry Walls, MD, use a neti pot with medical grade salt twice a day in your sinuses. The virus does not like that environment. It will not easily take hold. Okay, good to know. Hmm. I hadn't heard that, but I mean, anything you can yeah, do to yeah. use. Say again, Tom? You ever use a neti pot? You ever use a neti pot, Liz? I, I used one one time. Yeah. I no longer have a neti it didn't, pot. Wasn't it wasn't a, a, a good experience. I, yeah, I, no, I, did, I didn't care for it myself. I've watched it. Oh, you haven't used one? I've got members of my my. my I've got members of my family that, that 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 do it, both the traditional one and they've got some type of apparatus that jams up into both nostrils that kind of. Yeah. No, I have never, never. Yeah. I just. I, I uh, did use it once. It, it wasn't it was a good Probably experience. a good thing. Yeah. It might well, be uh, something that's particularly useful now. It, uh, you know, certainly. You know, do everything you can to 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 increase your odds. Liz, I got a, a gadget I wanna wanna show, and this is something that we've just started implementing. This is a temporal thermometer, I think is what they call it. Basically, you push a button and you push it on your forehead, it takes a couple of seconds and it gives you your temperature. Um we do some, we, this is something that we're starting to do and something we're telling our clients that we're doing just to get a higher degree of confidence. If, you know, we're going to make sure that, that, that all of our people have a normal body temperature before they go about their day working. And, uh, you know, there's a chance that somebody might think that they're well and might have a fever and not even know it. Well, we're doing this. I know that uh, there's some communities I think the state of Ohio is doing something that's requiring employers to do that. I heard that today, um, requiring their employers to take the temperatures of their employees before they start their work day. So, were they requiring that, it? That was. I saw an email. I might be wrong on that. I'll double check. But um, Derek sent I'm me an email. How they, 
I'm wondering how they mandate something like that. Who, who's check, checking? They probably can't enforce that yeah. very well. Although all the businesses but, are closed down, so there's not that many places to check. Yeah. I saw somebody somewhere in the thread that somebody said that they were uh, doing a quote on a pizzeria, and I'm that's you know, wondering a lot of the food establishments are being closed down, right? Uh, that's probably why she's cleaning it, right? Because it's closed down and now it's empty, and they want they need to be able to clean it so that it can open again. That's my guess. Hoping, hoping, that, right? All yeah, of these places sense. that are closed are going to have to be cleaned and disinfected before they open again. That's a good good point. It's not hard to drive, you know, down the street and look to your left and look to your right and look at businesses that have been closed down. Mm -hmm. Really, every one of those is an opportunity, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, I'm not seeing any more questions here, <laughs> although they could be there. I just can't see them. <laughs> Don Can saying no touch or sold out. Yeah, we uh, had to make a ton of phone calls and it was kind of a mad dash, but we were able to find uh, you know, a couple of these in, 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 in Charleston. We were hoping to find more actually, but um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, in really short supply. Spent some time on Amazon looking for these, and you know you could order them, but you were out a number of weeks before you would get them. Yeah, the other one we were looking for was like May first or something was guaranteed delivery date. The other part of that that you want to get to are these little alcohol pads, and these are pretty much used for like cleaning the skin if somebody's getting a hypodermic needle, and it's also good for you know, cleaning the tip of this before doing it. So you want to make sure that you're cleaning this with an alcohol uh, pad every time you, you 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 do it between each use. If you are fortunate enough to find one. Also, wherever Dawn is, their pizza place is still open. So um, she says that they're they're open there. Wow, lucky. We don't have any open restaurants or anything here. So it just didn't occur to me that people are. And it sounds like Deborah is starting doing some of this work tomorrow. Yeah, part of uh, learning to, 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 to live in a world with the coronavirus, at least in, in my life, is getting used to eating frozen pizza. <laughs> have, uh, you know just it's going to be different for a while well the all the fast food places are still open up here the windows are drive through and you can get almost any restaurant still through um grubhub so yeah. they're doing a lot of delivery so so they're managing it over here anyway west coast east coast all right anything else that you can think of tom <sighs> well, we could go on and on and on, but we'll we'll save some stuff for tomorrow. I'll uh, pull together a uh, a simple uh, bid outline that uh, that anybody could use for some one of these non traditional accounts, and we can share that tomorrow and uh, get into whatever else anybody uh, wants to. Uh, uh, you know that would be helpful. Sounds good. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. You guys take care and uh, be safe and uh, try to get some rest. And we'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. Thank you. 2 o'clock Pacific.